Hello, I thought it might be interesting to go over my mail setup and how I view and send mail on the command line. The key tools that I use are OpenSMTPD, FDM, and Emblaze. And we'll go over each of these one by one, but first let's download them. Uh, FDM and Emblaze. And we don't need to download OpenSMTPD because it comes with the OpenBSD base install. So if we look at SMTPD, we see that it's a, well, it's basically a service that acts as the machine's primary mail system. And uh, it listens on interfaces and like handles SMTP transactions. Uh, but what we really want to look at is also the SMTPD configuration file. And basically, this is just a list of rules on how to route uh, these messages that it's listening for. And if we look at the machine's uh, SMTP, SMTPD configuration file, uh, it's pretty simple. I've already uh, set this up. Uh, basically, it's got an aliases table, um, and it's listening on the loopback interface. And then we've defined an action here to uh, deliver mail in the mail deer format to the user's home slash user slash mail deer directory using uh, this uh, expansion, uh, this alias expansion on the aliases table, and any mail that is uh, local on the local machine uses that action. Uh, now let's look at the aliases table. Basically it's a key value store and what I mean what I mean by alias expansion, if you look at the uh, root, uh, what this says is any mail set, uh, any mail addressed to the root user will actually be uh, routed to me. Uh, one note I want to make is that if you update this file, you have to run the new aliases program. All right. So um, if we look at our mail deer directory, we've already got one. Actually, uh, before I do that, uh, I want to talk a little bit about why I prefer mail deer. Normally, um, mail comes in this long spool file. Let me pull it up. Uh, oh, let me pipe that into pager. Um, so all the mail for this one user is stored in one file. So here you have one message, and then you have another message, and then you have a third message. So it's all on one like uh, it's all on one file. Whereas with mail dear, um, each file is a separate message, and then you have three directories called current, new, and temp. Uh, as you can see, we've already got some messages here. Um, and you can also see that uh, the root, the mail address to root was uh, routed uh, or forwarded to me. Um, so what these uh, directories are, when the SMTPD service is like communicating with a remote server and pulling in new mail, um, it stores uh, that mail initially in the temp directory until it uh, sends an acknowledgement to that remote server and saying, hey, I've, I'm done fetching all the mail. And then it moves those messages to the new directory. And then you know that you have new mail because your new directory is no longer empty and, or whatever. And then you can move these messages to the current directory on your own uh, volition. Uh, another thing I want to note are message flags. Um, so, like, uh, if you if you see a message or you've already read it, but you you've read a message, you can mark these messages as seen by uh, adding message flags at the end of the file name. And we'll look at that a little bit later. You can also uh, send mail with the send mail command. Funnily enough. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, actually, what we can do is we can 
detail the uh, logs or the mail log for so that we know if something actually happened. And this is just the log for the SMTPD service. And so when we send mail to me, we can set the header, uh, we can set a subject header and a body. And then when we want to send something, we do control D. And then we see that a message was delivered. And then we can uh, check the mail dear folder. And we see actually we have a new message. And here's that new message. Now, that's great for local mail, but I want to receive mail from the internet. And I also want a better way to view and compose mail rather than manipulating plain text files. Uh, and normally I have a self-hosted mail server for this, um, but for people who don't want to go through the process of setting up their own server, you can always use Gmail or some other mail provider. And I actually have a Gmail account set up to demonstrate this, but I don't want to use Gmail on a browser. So you need to be able to fetch mail from the internet. And for that, we use FDM and the IMAP protocol. Uh, then you want to be able to send mail, and for that we need to update a few things in our SMTPD configuration. And I'm also a big fan of using Emblaze. Now instead of MUT, which is an email client like Outlook uh, or Thunderbird, Emblaze is a collection of Unix utilities, small programs that each do one thing very well. You have a program to list mail, another to compose mail, another to sort, and so on and so forth. And because they accept input through standard input and print to standard output, you can pipe these programs to each other and script them in various ways, all to produce the setup that works best for you. So if we go to the Emblaze manual page, as you can see, there are a lot of programs here. <laughs> and we're not going to go over all of them, but be sure to check them out. Um, the first thing we need to do is set our Emblaze profile. And you can see the configuration here. Um, so we need to set some uh, keys in a file. And uh, the uh, Emblaze profile is stored in .emblaze, a directory called .emblaze. And then the file is profile in that directory. So we edit this, and then we can set local mailbox. I'll set that to myself with this email address. Um, we should also set the FQDN, fully, quite, fully qualified domain name. And you can set that to whatever. I'll just uh, set that here. To this and then we want to set an outbox and I just use home Joseph mail dear outbox and that should be it and then we can use um, the various uh, emblaze utilities to uh, view messages and send messages so let's go ahead and do that let me clear my screen First, we want to use mlist. And what this does, actually, let me go ahead and show the man page. What this does is it will list messages from specific mail dear directories. But it only lists them, it only lists the file names or, or the file paths. So if we go here and we say mlist mail dear, uh, it, we have three messages here. And these are just the, uh, the, the file names. What we need to do is pipe different utilities based on what we want. And um, we also want to, so what, what I like to do next is to sort uh, these files. Um, so we can look at msort. And I want to sort them by date. So uh, we can see the, uh, the hyphen D uh, switch sorts by date. But I also want to sort from the newest to the top. So that's usually, I think we need to reverse that as well. So we can do something like this pipe uh, 
M sort E R. Okay. So um that looks like it's sorted it to the newest first. And then what we need to do is we need to save this to a, a sequence. And what that is, is if we look at M sequence, it message this this program manipulates message sequences. And what that basically is, in your mblaze folder, you have, well, I don't have it now, but you uh, would have a sequence file. So uh, mblaze sequence. And what this file is, is a list of sequences. So basically just this. So it's a list of file names. And then you have a, your current message, which is basically just a symbolic link to your current message. So if I want to do this, then we have, so we have mlist at mail dear, and we've sorted it by date in reverse order. And then we want to save that, uh, let me look, we want to save that, uh, so we need to use the hyphen capital S to uh, set the message sequence passed on standard input. So, mc dash s so now if we look at our mblaze folder we now see we have a sequence file and it has a bunch of files and then what we can do is use mscan to list those to show like short one line summaries um yeah uh generate one line message summaries and so let's just do that Okay, we can see, I can see the message I just sent and I can see the two uh, messages, uh, the two insecurity reports from uh, uh, the root user. I can also uh, read messages with mshow, which will extract or render the messages on the command line. Um, so uh, if you see these numbers right here, these are little uh, identifiers that I can use to show. Uh, that I can use to um, manipulate uh, certain things with uh, these programs. So if I do mshow1, I can now see this message that I, I just sent to myself. If I do mshow2, um, I can see that message. Another thing about mshow is that the uh, period just means the current message. So this will just print out the current message. Um, if you want to you can also pipe this to a pager, um, or let me show a longer message. Um, yeah, so uh, I can pipe this to a pager, or I can use uh, M less, which basically just does the same thing, but it has like certain hotkeys that you can use to go to the next message. Um, so if I do M less, and I do colon P, I get to the previous message. If I go colon N, I go to the next message. So that's pretty cool. I can also um, format, like, okay, so if I go to mscan again, it's a little bit, actually, this is fine. Well, I'll show it anyway. So if I go to mscan, you can see, um, you can see, like, uh, this is, like, the unread marker. This is the message number. This is the date, the uh, person who sent the message, and then uh, your, the subject. And you can update this um, with, uh, let's go to uh, mblaze profile. You can update this with your uh, uh, scan format. Oh, actually, you got to go to mscan. And then this is the default format. And you can copy that and then go to the mblaze profile, let's just go to scan format, and then paste that here. And then something I like to do is I like a little bit more space between everything. So my date will have like, I like three spaces, maybe. Uh, yeah, that looks good. And then once we do M scan, you can see I, it's just a little bit more readable to me, like I have a little bit more space. Uh, and then you can play around with this if you like. 
So now you've read your messages and you want to mark them as seen. Um, so the problem is that uh, you can't update these until they're in the current directory. Right now they're in the new directory. So uh, mBlaze has a program called mIncorporate or mInc, which incorporates the new messages and moves them into the current directory. So we just uh, do mInc mail dear, and that has moved uh, them into the current directory, as you can see. And if we do, uh, oh, uh, also something you need to understand is that if you do mscan again, since the messages have been moved, you have to actually update your sequences. So let's go back to our command here, uh, and then do mscan, and then we can see. Um, and but they're still showing as uh, uh, unread, so let's mark them as read. Uh, and for that, we need the m flag command. Um, and this allows us to manipulate mail dear message flags. Um, so the switch we need is the dash or hyphen capital S to mark messages as seen. So uh, we can do m flag dash S and one through three. And then if we update the sequences, we can see that these messages are no longer showing as unread, they're showing as read. Now we want to receive mail from the internet. Um, and for this, we're using FDM. And FDM stands for fetch and deliver mail. I'm pretty sure it's, a, it's in reference to the old program fetch mail. Um, so we can uh, use this to contact our uh, Gmail IMAP server and ret um, uh, fetch some mail. Um, and to do that, we need to we actually need to update a configuration file, um, which is um, the fdm.conf file. This is just basically a list of rules to uh, fetch mail with. For that, we need to uh, do vim.fdm.conf. Here's what I like to do. Uh, first, I'll de uh, define our mail dear. And I also like to define a cache. And what we do is we set an account. And I'll just label this, uh, maybe I'll label this uh, Gmail. I, it's an IMAP server, and the server is imap.gmail.com. Something I also like to do is only fetch the new mess, uh, mail from the server. And then uh, we set a cache with our cache path. And then we look, go on to the list of rules. So first we need to have a key to uh, update our cache with. First thing we need to do is uh, update our cache. And to do that, we need a cache key to update our cache with. So we need a rule, match case. Uh, and then we use this regex, uh, yeah, yeah, there we go. Um, and then, this stands for case insensitive. Everything that falls after this is case insensitive. Because, um, so what the key we're using is message ID. Um, so the reason I do this is because you could have um, a message ID header, or you could have a message with a capital M, or you could have message ID capital I, cap lowercase d, or message ID with cap. So get, to get all of that, I just say, I don't care about case. And then we use, uh, we capture um, everything that follows it as the message ID. And then we set the action as, we want to tag the key message ID with the value that we just captured. And then we continue. And then if it's if the message is in the cache, then we need to skip.
And then for everything else, we'll deliver it to our mail beer. And then add this to our cache. And then keep the message. I don't want to delete the message from the server. And then I think we're done. And we want to make sure that this file is not world right world readable. So we just do six ch mod six hundred fpm dot com. Now to get this working with Gmail, you need to first enable IMAP on Gmail. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh go here see all settings and then we need to go to forwarding and pop slash imap and then we want to enable imap and then save our changes the next thing we need to do is create an app password um, and the reason we need to do this is because normally when you use your normal login and password uh, uh, Google's going to ask for uh, uh, two-factor authentication and that's just not going to work for us. So to do this, to create an app password, we need to go to manage your Google account. We need to go to security to create an app password. Um, before you can do that, you need to enable two-step verification, which I've already done. So let's go ahead and create an app password. It's going to ask me for my password. Now let's... Um, Select the app, which is just mail. I don't care about these other things here. And then custom name. We'll use my machine name, devbox-obsd. And then we can generate this. Um, and then this is your app password. And then we can copy that. And then we need to uh, set the password. Now, you could use your fpm.com file. Um, but the thing about this is that I like to uh, add these files to source control, and I don't want to put passwords in source control. Um, so uh, something you can do is, um, hold on, you can uh, use the not .net rc file um, to store these, and the de the .net rc file uh, that specification can be found in the FTP uh, manual page. Um, here we go. So you define the machine name, the login name, and the password. Pretty straightforward. So let's go and do that. The machine is uh, imap.gmail.com. The login is bluepuppetcompany.gmail.com. And the password is what we just copied. And then we need to make sure that this is also not world readable. And then I think we can just do FBM fetch. All right, cool. Yeah, so we've got two messages. Um, and so we just need to uh, update our sequences. And then we can use Emscan. And as you can see, uh, we've got some mail from Google. Now, I've actually got another uh, email account here. And I've just sent myself um, a message. And let's go ahead and retrieve it. So we just do FDM fetch again. Oh, it might take a while. Let's try again. And again, OK, so I, I just figured out what happened. Uh, the new email account I used uh, was marked as spam. So um, I fixed that, and we should be good to go. We just FDM fetch again. And we process one message, and we can update the sequences. And then we can see, hey, we've got a new message. Hello, Joseph. Here's a message for you. Thanks.
game. Oh, that's nice. Um, we can also write back a message. So we do that with uh, the program mcom and uh, mcom, mrep, mboard, mbounce. Uh, they basically do different things uh, based on what you want, but they all send messages. So if we want to send mail, we have to update our uh, SMTPD configuration first. And for this, we need to define a new action. Uh, SMTP TLS. Um, and this uh, is basically a key. I'll, I'll explain that later. Um, and then the server is smtp.gmail.com on the port 587. Uh, and then we use uh, credentials table. And we need to uh, define a new table, uh, change the name, and then, uh, no, let's go ahead and do a new one. So any mail from bluepuppetcompany at gmail.com for any action, use outbound. And then we want to define a, want to edit a credentials file. And here, this is the Gmail key that I was talking about earlier. And then we need to use our uh, username and then password, which should be the same, the same app password that we used before. And we want to make sure that those credentials are not world readable. So let's use do as chmod 600. Etsy name credentials. And then we can go ahead and write a message. Oh, whoops, I need to create a mail deer for our outbox. And we could do that with the um, mmakedeer command or program. So we just do mmakedeer mail deer outbox. And you can see that that created a new mail deer folder. And then we can do mcom this time. So we are writing to our friend uh, Jane Doe. Uh, uh, thanks for the welcome. It was good to hear from you. Jane, let's talk more. And then just save out of that. And you can preview your message. Um, you can edit it again. Um, you can also uh, cancel out. Um, and then the draft will be there in the uh, outbox. And then you can come back. Oh, wait, no. You can also delete. I can delete that. But uh, let's see. I want to go back to that message. Oh, resume editing is dash r. Okay, so mcom dash r. Uh, so we've got got this back again, and then we can send it. Okay, send mail command fails. Invalid recipient. Oh, something I forgot to do is uh, update or restart SM our SMTPD uh, service. So let's do this, um, and then try sending it again. So we see that our open SMTPD service has started again, and then we send. And that looks like it worked. And if we actually go back to our uh, uh, our Gmail on the browser, we can see that we have sent some mail. So on the other mail account, I just uh, replied back to our message. So let's go ahead and fetch. might take a while. Try again. OK, we've got a new message. Um, and so we'll go back to this uh, pipe command uh, and then do mscan. Um, we have a reply, but it's not really 
we don't we, ha we don't have a good indication of what uh, it's replying to, and we can do that with uh, M thread, which uh, arranges these messages into threads. Um, and so the way we do that is we use M list again, and then we can pipe that into M thread. Uh, the, the, the dash R means we want to do it in reverse order, and then we want to do standard input. Actually, no, is that correct? Uh, no, no, no. Oh, so um, it referenced this this switch. Let me try that again. Reverse order. Uh, the the dash S switch um, basically says reference um, the male deer outbox uh, directory for message I message IDs. So if we go to um, mail deer outbox, we can see that there's a message ID starting with 2y176. And then if we go to, um, let's see here. No, no, actually, no, it's right here. Uh, we can see that, uh, I might have to go, let's see, uh, there's a bunch of headers here, and then, uh, actually, maybe it's this one, or maybe, uh, the, la the last one, right, um, we can see that, uh, we've got a message ID, but it's also referencing another one, 2y176. Um, so we do that, and then we uh, update our message sequence, and then we do mscan. And then you can see um, Jane Doe was replying to my earlier message that I sent. So that's pretty cool. Something else that we want to be able to do is to view attachments that people send us. So um, on the other mail account, I've sent myself an attachment. So let's go ahead and fetch. got a new message and let's just use the old one here so we've got a new message uh, oh, let me just clean this up a little m flag two through six whoops oh wait uh right and i gotta include them and then i can set the flags and then i can do this again. Am I not doing this right? And include me. M oh, all right. I got to do M flag two through four. And then six. There we go. Let's uh, clear everything. Uh, update the sequences. M scan, second type. And then let's look at that message within attachment. Okay, so here we see that there's a message. Hello, Joseph. Here's an attachment. Thanks, Jane. There's also an image that uh, I sent myself, but we don't have any way to render that. Um, and we can do that with the mshow command. Um, specifically, uh, hyphen t will list all the mime parts of each message. And then... Uh, hyphen x will uh, will extract those parts. So what's that look like? Um, if we do m show dash t one, uh, we can see that there are multiple parts to this message. There's a, a plain text part, there's an HTML part, and then there's an image. And we want this image. So we can do m show extract, and then the first message, and then the fifth part. And now we have this hello world PNG. So what is that? Um, let's go here. And then it, it's just a, an image that says hello world. Okay. So there's that. And now we can send them. We can also send attachments as well. So if we go and uh, go to mscan, and then we can reply to this message. Um, so to Jane Doe from, 
here is your attachment back. And then what we do is we can do a, a hashtag and then we set the MIME type, which is image slash PNG, and then the path to the file, home is just hello world.png. And then we save and we quit and we can preview. And the way, if we know, we, the way we know that we did this correctly, we can set, we can uh, view the MIME types. As we can see, there's something wrong here. Uh, let me go back and edit this file and see what's going on. I think, I think there needs to be no space. Uh, let's try that again. Preview. Oh, yeah. See, it's uh, it's uh, attached the image, uh, here, and then if we uh, view mime, we can see that it's got a plain text part and an image part, and so we can go ahead and send that. And then if we look at our Gmail in the browser, um, let's see. we can see, hey, I've sent something with this image here. Let's go ahead and look at our, update our sequences first and then look at our messages. Um, sometimes you wanna delete old mail. Like I don't really need this uh, security alert or this Google community thing. Um, so I can go and, well, Emblaze doesn't actually have a utility to uh, remove mail, but uh, we don't need one because we already have um, RM or remove. So we can do this. Uh, we can do RM and then we say the sequence for uh, four, which is the uh, security alert, and also the sequence for six, which is the Google community. And then we enclose that parentheses. And then, uh, yeah, I want to delete that. I want to delete that. And then update our sequences. And then we can see it's all been cleaned up. Anyway, that's pretty much the basics of how I view and send mail on the command line. These tools, Open SMTPD, FDM, and Emblaze, are a pretty powerful combination. And you can customize your setup to how you want it. If you have any questions for me, be sure to check out my website, josephcho.com. I'm also on Twitter, GitHub, Reddit, and many, many other social networks. Bye now.